Good morning, folks. NASA released this article describing how the geocentric conjunction of Mars behind the Sun in a few weeks will create communication problems with the rover due to line of sight with the Sun. This will happen around April 19th, but it's got me thinking about Comet Ison, which will disappear behind the Sun in the same fashion mid-July. My point is about where Ison will be at that time, declining trajectory into the orbital plane of the planets, directly between Mars and Jupiter. Folks, the time we can't monitor this comet is the time it will be smashing through the asteroid belt. Let's flip over our perspective, watch the comet come in from behind. I officially submit that NASA, in the interest of homeland security and the safety of the planet, turn one of the stereo spacecraft to watch Ison's gauntlet run while we cannot. This would be an Elenin-like maneuver, except unlike Elenin, they aren't telling the world this is a puny comet and there's nothing to worry about. This comet Ison could do nearly anything if it hits some bigger rocks, and if this thing is going to change trajectory, especially if it's going to hit Mars, we need to know as soon as humanly possible. Most of you know, it's set to pass just 2 million miles from the North Pole of Mars, about two months before it comes much, much closer to the Sun. If you did it with Elenin, you almost have to do it now. Not much new weather news. Europe still has their cell moving east. It's mostly nice in the southwest Pacific with some local thunderstorm warnings. U.S. southeast dealing with severe weather while the north side of this low pressure system dumps snow. You are looking at various tiny solar eruptions that took place three to five days ago. There were more than a few very minor ejections and we knew the impact wouldn't be major, but NOAA, NASA, and myself all expected yesterday's news to include a defined impact. We had to wait another day. Speed and density of the solar wind in yellow and orange respectively, rising together midday, revealing the CME impact. Very weak, but it did take a shot at the magnetosphere, caused some significant inductions via the energy captured by our field, and the KP index did hit unstable levels briefly. The Earth footprint definitely begun to come back around to the limb and shifted south a bit. The active regions have been flaring as they crest out of you, so watch that today. The new active region turning in is mature, but docile. Then we have the top story. The umbral fields were to dictate the beginning of the earthquake uptick watch. Since the last major watch a few weeks ago, there has been only one 6 magnitude quake, a 6.1 in the South Sandwich Islands, where the global average is 3 per week. And as you can see, I'm jabbering away here, that massive coronal hole is cresting in now. While not yet directly earth-facing, the forceful magnetic opening is visible and central, and we already have our first two significant tremors. I'll tell you, it'd be great if this next watch could see an uptick of only the smaller sixes like this with no damage or death. Planets get to have their say in a matter of days, a bunch of them. I'll leave you with some more solar shots. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.